Hello and welcome. In this video I want to show you what the grid is and how you can use it to your advantage. First of all I'm going to close this console. Then I start off by right clicking on one of the 2D views, holding the left mouse button and moving the mouse. Now as you can see the red line which represents this brush snaps into these grid lines. If I now change the grid size from 4 to 1 and zoom in, I can see much finer lines. The grid size 4 is sort of the sweet spot when starting to create levels. For example, I have now here this brush and if I would use grid 1 I would have a really hard time aligning it to this line. If I press 4 for the grid 4, it's very easy to align this brush to the grid lines. Now you might ask, okay, so what? why should I care about grid lines? Now that's a good question. The grid lines are there to help you to reach certain sizes. For example, if you build a level, you have objects on it that want to move inside the level. For example, players. A player is basically a model with a collision box around it. Now, the size of the player, its collision box, is 44 by 44 by 96. Now, as you can see, I have 48 and 48. I cannot reach 44. Now I change the grid size from 4 to 3 and I can go to 44. Now this represents the space one player is occupying inside the level. How this is relevant I will show you in this example. Now we have here our box that represents a player crouching which is 49 units in height, 44 units in width and depth. Then we have a player standing, which is this box, which is 44 units, 44 units and 96 in height. Then we have the jump height of a player, which is 46 units, Then we have the jump height of a player while standing, which is in total 160, consisting of the jump height with 64, then the player bounding box with 96 units. Then we have the jump height again with 64 and a player crouching while jumping. We have here one box with 48 units in height, which is fairly easy to jump on for the player. Then we have a box with 46 units in height, which is the maximum of the player jump height, which makes it very difficult for the player to actually jump on the box. This in the four grid represents six squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the other box with 46 units represented in the four grid is eight squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If a player wanted to climb these stairs, he would have to jump. If a player moves over these small stairs, it can be very awkward in movement and you will need a lot of these stairs to get the player on a level. Now here is a example for what the best stair sizes are. They range from 8 to 24 units in height 
which is shown here, and in depth, which means basically in this direction here, the best you can have between eight, the best um, use of stairs and feeling of stairs can be between eight and 32. However, you need to experiment and try it out what works best for you. We have here a very complex stair which works perfectly well because we have all the right measurements on the stair. So just to show you how complex things can be made, it's not so much about making everything blocky and exactly within the measures, but to be guided by the measurements. You can, of course, deviate from it, but you should always be aware, as a beginner, try to stick to what's working. Um, this is the, uh, representing the player again. Then this would be a service duct or a Jeffrey's tube. And the player would fit in nicely if the tube is 46 units in height and 46 units in width or bigger. With doors, you want to keep the proportions, which means if you have to make the door bigger, you should also consider keeping the scale, like 122 and 96 should be scaled equally so that the textures will fit nicely. Floors. A floor should be at least 8 units thick, ideally 32. A player which is dropping from a distance is going to hit the floor eventually and if the floor is too thin in multiplayer the player can glitch through. To prevent this, you want the floor to be at least 8 units or bigger. Now here is an example how the sizes matter when using textures. This texture aligns perfectly, this one too, this one as well, this one too, which is actually the same as this, except this is double in size and the texture is repeated and here is an example how that would not really fit. You can however use the fit button to fit a texture but as you can see this might not yield the result you actually want. Here's a door, here are boxes, here again is the box with a different size and the texture not being correctly aligned. I hope this helps you and you learned something. See you next time. Bye bye.